Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Dark Floors. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young girl being examined by an MRI machine in a hospital. She's lying inside the machine as it scans her body. She keeps muttering that she feels pain. Outside, her father, Ben, is nervously watching over her as a doctor and nurse supervise the examination. The daughter's eyes flutter shut and then open. She screams that she wants the red crayon and then claws at the machine as it sparks on fire. The doctor remarks that there must be a power outage. Ben rushes inside and extricates the girl from the machine. He makes the decision to take her home against the advice of the doctor and nurse. The daughter has a mysterious neurological illness that makes her speak only a few phrases and paralyze from the waist down. So far, despite the many tests administered, doctors still do not know why the daughter is like that. Furthermore, the hospital equipment has been malfunctioning. The nurse suggests that Ben take her to an institution, but he refuses to give up on his daughter. While they're speaking, a man in a jacket brushes up against the girl. Ben takes her back to her hospital room. He looks at how fragile his daughter is and makes up his mind to break her out of the hospital. He puts her in a wheelchair and rolls her down the hallway. Just before they're about to get inside the elevator, the nurse notices them. She tells Ben that he's making a mistake. Meanwhile, the daughter is sketching a foreboding drawing with a black crayon on a sketch pad she cradles in her lap. The elevator doors open and Ben wheels his daughter inside. However, she looks distressed and holds on to the elevator doors. The nurse steps inside, trying to convince Ben not to go, saying that they'll try a new course of drugs for his daughter. A security guard and a senile old man step into the elevator after them. There's also another man with them, holding a teddy bear, called John. The elevator doesn't descend for more than a couple of floors before it suddenly comes to a halt. The light inside also shuts off. The people inside the elevator all adjust to the darkness as the guard pulls out his flashlight. However, they discover that the old man is now lying unconscious on the floor. The guard radios for help using his walkie-talkie, but it just echoes his words back to him. The nurse performs CPR, and after a moment, the old man breathes again. At the same moment, the lights turn back on. She helps the old man stand up, and he asks her why she could not just let him die. The elevator climbs back up to the sixth floor. But when the doors open, they find the whole floor empty. They all wonder what happened to the once busy floor. The group moves further down the hallway to use the stairs, but the door is locked and the guard can't open it. The group goes to the staircase at the other end of the wings, but Ben stops while walking when he hears a strange noise coming from one of the rooms. The guard investigates and finds that the noise is coming from a photocopying machine that was left unattended. The guard drops the photocopy pages on the floor and the nurse flips through them. The pictures are all dark except for a weird wispy shape at the edge that curiously looks like a creature's mouth with fangs. Feeling a chill, she leaves the photos on the floor. John checks and sees that even his phone doesn't have any reception. The old man keeps whispering that they won't be able to find a way out. The nurse takes Ben aside and continues their conversation. She reveals that the daughter needs to take her medication or else she could die. A woman in a wheelchair is slumped next to the wall. The nurse slowly walks to her and she discovers that the woman is dead and her eyes are missing. All that is left are dark sockets where her eyes used to be. The daughter begins drawing the woman. The guard tries to use one of the hall phones to contact anyone, but there is no reception as well. They have no choice but to keep going. They take the staircase going down. A clanging sound echoes through the floors. They peek downstairs and see nothing but darkness. Suddenly, something whizzes on the guard's head. It cuts his neck, but he is otherwise fine. The group hurriedly enters the fifth floor to hide. They barricade the staircase door with a metal crutch. At this point, John is already visibly panicking. The nurse warns Ben that any sudden noises or flashes of light can trigger his daughter's seizures, so they have to be careful. All of a sudden, they hear the same clanging noise, but it's now nearer. The daughter wheels herself down the hallway, and the rest of the group follow after her. The guard suggests going to the info desk on the other side of the wing. They arrive at the info desk, but there's still no one there. John desperately speaks to the PA system and announces that they're on the fifth floor and they need help. The guard immediately yanks him away and reprimands him for revealing their location when there could be a killer in the building. The security camera shows that there are people on the third floor. Meanwhile, the daughter sneaks away again and goes inside a set of doors. Ben realizes that she's gone and goes off to search for her. The old man curiously knows where she is and points Ben to the right direction. Ben finds his daughter inside a dark hallway, staring off into space. He approaches her, but is distracted by something moving behind the door of an adjacent room. The guard and the nurse enter the hallway too. She asks Ben if she saw something, but he chooses not to tell her about the weird movement behind the door. 
When they go back into the main hallway, the television and the radio nearby go haywire. The old man covers his ears. An audio loop begins to play, and John's phone rings. However, there's no one at the other end of the line. A high-pitched screech reverberates through the corridors and breaks all the glass. A ghostly figure of a woman emerges from the same room that Ben was looking at earlier, and she chases the group. They all hide inside a room as the female ghost stalks toward them, still screaming. The guard shoots her with his gun, but the bullets just pass through her. John accidentally leans on an x-ray machine, and it begins to emit a similar high-pitched sound that drives the ghost away. When she's finally gone, Ben voices his suspicion that the old man knows who that ghost is because he covered his ears right before she appeared. The old man says nothing but the name Scream Queen, implying that it's the name of the ghost. Meanwhile, John is in denial about what he just saw. He says that maybe they're all just experiencing mass psychosis. He leaves the group behind. He gets into an elevator, but once inside, it starts malfunctioning. He calls for help, and Ben and the guard attempt to rescue him by prying open the elevator doors. Behind John, another monster is trying to climb through the elevator floor. They manage to get him out, but the monster bites him in the leg. Meanwhile, back in the x-ray room, the old man holds a gun up to his own head, much to the nurse's shock. The daughter suddenly speaks up and says that she promises the old man will sleep soon. The old man lowers the gun. Ben and the guard get the injured John back into the room. They walk out into the hallway once again. The intercom blares to life, and it's the people on the third floor asking for help. The group tries to go down the stairs again, but discovers that the exit has been blocked. A voice filters through the radio, demanding that they surrender the girl. They hear the clanging sound again, and they scurry inside the third floor. The entire floor looks dark and dirty. They stumble upon the dead bodies of the hospital staff and patients on the floor. A huge monster's shadow appears behind the door and breaks through the wall. It's a massive horned demon with long dark hair. The old man stays behind and merely stands as the monster passes by him. The guard and Ben block the monster's path with a vending machine. The guard faces off with the monster, but his bullets do not do any damage. The monster catches up to him while the rest of the group returns to the staircase. They listen to the sounds of the guard's death. They run inside the lobby of the third floor. John pieces things together and surmises that they need to surrender the daughter to the monsters so the rest of them can live. Of course, Ben is enraged at this idea and refuses. When they look out at the window, they see a strange sight. Raindrops are falling agonizingly slowly on the windowpane, and in the distance, a huge flash of lightning illuminates a dark city that is so different from the one they thought they were in. The nurse hears the same person on the intercom again, asking where they are. She replies that they're on the third floor. She realizes that it's a loop. Earlier, she had asked the person on the intercom where they are. Now, she is hearing her voice being played back to her. John suggests that maybe they are in a parallel dimension, where time has stopped based on the frozen clocks, the empty hospital, and the frozen bolt of lightning. However, the daughter is growing sick, and she needs her medication soon. The nurse tells Ben that the floor where the medicine is stored is behind the blocked exit. They decide that they will go there and leave the daughter behind with John. Before they leave, Ben threatens to kill John if he lays a hand on his daughter. While walking, Ben asks the nurse what she thinks about the daughter's mysterious drawings. She confesses that she believes that the daughter holds the key to what's happening to them. She also remarks that when she touched the old man earlier, his skin was so cold, it's almost as if he was dead already. They encounter another dead body in the hallway. Ben and the nurse go down to the blocked exit. They try to break the wall using a sledgehammer, the clanging sound of it reverberating through the staircase. They hear voices coming upstairs, and Ben shoots the gun instinctively. But they realize that it was not a monster upstairs, but it was actually them a few hours earlier. The time loop is messing with them again, and it's actually Ben who shot the guard in the neck. At the same time, the clanging sound they kept hearing earlier was Ben breaking the wall. Ben finally breaks through, and they step inside the floor. They find two skeletons who died while hugging each other in the middle of the hallway. John takes Ben's daughter and wheels her out. He intends to offer her to the monsters so he can survive. The old man inexplicably appears behind him, looking gaunt and gray. He tells John that the daughter isn't his to give. John retaliates by punching the old man. The old man manages to reach out to Ben via the walkie-talkie and tell him that his daughter is in danger. Ben and the nurse immediately head back upstairs. Sam begins to blow into the room and a new monster appears. This time, it has an exposed skull and a terrifying growl. It reaches inside John's chest and pulls out his heart. Ben arrives and pushes a hospital bed into the monster, sending it flying to the wall. The old man finally dies, and the nurse remarks that it looks like he's already been dead for a week. 
they go down to the ground floor and find more dead bodies. The daughter silently murmurs that they shouldn't go there. The nurse looks for another exit, and they go deeper into the ground floor. She thinks that they can find the daughter's medicine in one of the cabinets, but they don't have any luck. Suddenly, the daughter disappears. Ben and the nurse split up to look for her. The nurse sees a monster with its back turned to her. She quietly picks up a defibrillator and uses it to shock the monster with electricity. Meanwhile, Ben goes through a door and ends up back at the normal hospital. All around him are people, but they can't see or hear him. He can't touch people either because he's basically like a ghost. Ben picks up the walkie-talkie and tells the nurse where he is. She gets there, but they can't see each other because he's in a different dimension. He goes through another door and winds up back in the dark hospital dimension. He finds his daughter inside the elevator, but before he can reach her, a monster appears and chokes Ben. The old man steps in and gives Ben time to get away. However, the monster seriously injures him. He stabs the monster too before dying. It is implied that the old man is also a supernatural creature, but not like the other evil monsters. The nurse finds Ben and the daughter. They go inside the elevator, and just as the doors close, another monster comes to attack them. But the elevator glitches again and forces them to stop at a floor. The daughter covers her ears with her hands, and Ben realizes that the Scream Queen will be coming. Sure enough, the ghost appears, claws at the nurse, and wounds her leg. But the ghost soon disappears again. The nurse tells Ben to leave her behind, but he refuses to. He places the nurse in the wheelchair, and she carries Ben's daughter on her lap. They go through a hallway, filled with corpses that are slowly reanimating. They enter the morgue, which has a door that leads to the garage. Ben and his daughter make it to the adjoining garage, but the door slams shut behind them and traps the nurse inside the morgue. The reanimated corpses kill her, and all Ben can do is try to get the door open. The daughter starts to panic and tells Ben that something is coming. He hurriedly puts the daughter inside a hospital ambulance and drives away. But they crash into a cement pillar inside the garage, and the car won't start again. A dark cloud is forming inside the garage, and several monsters try to catch the father and daughter. She just keeps saying vague phrases, and Ben begs her to tell him the answer to their survival. Ben gets the daughter out of the car, and leaves her sitting behind another car. He gets back inside the ambulance, and attempts to ram through the monster to kill him. Just before impact, a ghostly apparition of his daughter appears in front of him. He gets out of the car and asks her what she's doing. He doesn't realize that he stepped into the puddle created by the monster, and it consumes him. The daughter turns to the monster and tells him that she has to go home now. The monster growls at her, but she closes her eyes. When she wakes up, she's back in the MRI machine she was in at the beginning of the film. She screams and tries to claw her way out. Just like before, Ben gets her out and comforts her. It turns out, the daughter is stuck in a time loop, and she will just keep watching her father and the others die over and over again. While waiting for the elevator, the same man in a jacket brushes up to the daughter. This time, his face is shown, and it's revealed that he is the same old man. He smiles and whispers to the daughter that he doesn't feel cold anymore. This alludes that the old man stands for the bright side, and he encourages the little girl to stand up to her disease, and find a key to end the monsters in the upcoming monstrous dimension. The movie ends with the daughter whimpering, but this time, she gets the blue crayon, determined to fight her way to rescue the people heading to their deaths in the coming loop. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.